let's do a quick check of whether this sensitivity reports calculation tallies with the actual model or not. Right? So we come back to our original model where we have reset the coefficients 10, 15, 180 and the optimal solution is uh, as such. So let's just uh, take note of the current amount of profits we are making 412.5 and we now propose to increase the right hand side from 100 to 150. All right, and then we attempt to solve it again. Now, remember, when we click solver, it can be three hours later for a complex model. And uh, we will not be able to make any decision in the meantime because uh, management, they are waiting for the outcome before they can uh, decide. So, uh, but we are just, just doing a quick and dirty uh, verification of what we have already calculated in uh, our sensitivity report. So we just do a solve and we find that uh, we have new solution, that's fine. But the question is, did we experience increase in profits because of the increase in uh, 50 units of aluminium being purchased? Answer is yes. And how much increase has resulted from that 50 uh, units of additional aluminium? Answer is exactly $156.25 precisely the quantity we have predicted upfront using shadow price not surprisingly because after all uh, sensitivity report is the byproduct of having run through number the number crunching of the same model beforehand so excel already knew the linear increase in optimal value per unit increase in Aluminium per unit increase in steel. Okay, all these uh, increases operated separately. Operated separately. So if we adjust one by one, we can do this prediction. All right. So, uh, what if we reduce the right hand side quantity of uh, steel? We find that steel has uh, steel price from this supplier has been jacked up over the months and we really want to control our budget a little bit and maybe switch to another supplier. So in the meantime, we like to reduce um, the purchase amount from 80 down to um, 40. Okay, so the proposed change, 80 down to 40. Question is, uh, can we now a priori, that means without clicking solver again, calculate estimate the impact on our uh, profit so if we reduce the steel we should expect a drop in profit but by how much sounds pretty drastic because earlier on we increased by 50 percent we get 150 dollars uh, and maybe thousands of units right uh, now we drop by 50 percent first of all let's check the range of feasibility because we need to make use of shadow price and is shadow price valid that's the question so if we start from 80, we know that 80 can go down to as uh, low as 50 because 80 minus 30 is 50 and 80 can go up to as high as 150 and so long as it is within this range, sensitivity report says shadow price is guaranteed to be valid. So when we want to propose to reduce to 40, we are unable to okay so if you are posed with this question what is your answer answer is we are unable to uh, calculate the amount of impact on our profits we just say we cannot calculate we cannot say that you cannot do it how dare you tell the boss that you cannot change right so we just say that based on using sensitivity report alone we cannot do it if you want if business requires this change, then we just have to click the solver button again. And if it takes three hours, it takes three hours. Okay. For now, because it's just an example for us to, to learn how to calculate, let's suppose we propose to reduce this amount to uh, 51. A little bit uh, above the minimum requirement, right? So we are going to test the limit a little bit. 
if we reduce the purchase of steel from 80 down to 51 units, how much impact will it be on our profits? Okay, so per unit increase will lead to $1.25 increase in profit. Therefore, per unit decrease will lead to $1.25 decrease in profits. And we are decreasing by um, 29 units. So therefore, it will be 29 units times the shadow price amount of decrease. Right. So we will have negative 29 because it is a drop. So we'll experience a drop of $36.25 uh, $36 of profits per week if we reduce the 80 down to 51. Okay, uh, let's give it a check. So let's switch back to our 100 here and we can erase the solution because it's uh, not no longer useful. Um, 412 was our original amount of profits, right? So now we propose to change 80 down to 51. Let's solve it again to find out the actual uh, profits. So the amount of profits, the new amount of profits is 376.25. Of course, we have new solutions. And there is a drop, right? From the original amount, the new amount is a drop from the original amount by three uh, $36.25 dollars exactly as we have predicted using the sensitivity report okay now notice that i have made changes one row at a time one row at a time and uh, i do not institute simultaneous change such as increasing aluminium by 10 decreasing steel by 10 you know we sometimes we need to shift resources from one place to another uh, such as labor such as money and they are interchangeable, right? So we can shift from department A to department B and ask, will the optimal solution change? Will the, uh, how much will it impact our profits and so on? So when that simultaneous change happens, uh, we need to do a check first. Right now, we're not going to do that. We'll do that in the next video session, okay? So right now, we, are, we have uh, fully understood the shadow price column, how to use it, allowable increase and decrease, we know that the right hand side is copied from the model and the final value here reflects the amount of left hand side that is available. And that leads us to our discussion of surplus and slack. So in this case, we have, uh, let's just put it here again. Slack is basically for less than equal to uh, constraints where slack is defined as right hand side minus left hand side and it is always non-negative value and for greater equal to constraints we call it surplus it can have a surplus of zero if left hand side equal to right hand side but for surplus case it is defined as left hand side minus right hand side so in this case we actually have slack of zero because left hand side is equal to right hand side and in this case we say that the the constraint is binding, right? So when left hand side equals to right hand side, regardless of whether it is less than equal to or greater than equal to, we say constraint is binding. Okay, it is a binding constraint, just a term. And in a binding constraint, the shadow price, as we see now, is non zero. Okay, so we can add uh, and shadow price will be non-zero maybe positive maybe negative and otherwise otherwise that is when left hand side is greater than right hand side or left hand side is less than right hand side the constraint is non-binding and shadow price definitely will be zero they occur together binding constraints have non-zero shadow price non-binding constraints have zero shadow price as is stated in this slide okay so uh, essentially the surplus and slack con uh, concept come come from the idea of uh, changing the model from inequality to equality changing the constraints constraints are made up of inequalities and we would like to change 
the all the inequalities to equality by introducing new variables. So here, uh, originally it was x1 less than equal to 6. Now we add in a, a, va a variable, s1, the gap in between, so as to make it equal to 6. So as x1 increases, s1 will reduce all the way down to 0 if necessary, but it will not be negative. All right, so in the case of surplus, uh, originally 2x1 plus 5x2 would have been greater than or equal to 10, more than 10. In a feasible solution, x1, x2 will satisfy that. They will form such combination as to be greater than or equal to 10. But we will reduce that amount, right? We will minus that surplus, s1, that positive surplus. So if the, the value could have been 12, we will minus off 2. If the value could have been 20, we'll minus of 10. So S1 will stretch and shrink accordingly and all the way to zero if necessary, so as to make it equal to exactly 10, all right? So in that sense, we can actually successfully turn inequalities into equalities. And that's just a way to uh, relook at the model. Uh, but what I think is nice is the idea that uh, we can obtain calculate surplus and slack directly from the sensitivity report like this, right? So that's uh, the extent that I like to discuss about slack and surplus variables. So for this section, we are quite done with uh, the constraints section of Excel's sensitivity report. And at the same time, we are uh, basically, we have completed the, the understanding and interpretation of Excel's sensitivity report. In the next video session, uh, we will discuss about what we should do when multiple disturbances are introduced. So see you again in the next video session.